All right, so we're excited. Today we get to go be passengers on a Katana 50. There are no passengers in life. This is one of the boats that we are considering. So this is a big day for us to see if this could possibly be the right boat for us. The reputation for Katana is that this is a sailor's boat. It's got fine entry bows and relatively high bridge deck clearance, but the interior is fit very well. It's comfortable and seems to be a really good mix for this family of four. They're more higher. Yeah. <laughs> they just need a lot of food. What, Mom? You're for hire, you just need certain snacks on board and you'll be all set. Yeah. This Katana will be the first of the boats we're looking at as a possible replacement for Clarity. And I'll tell you, our approach is decidedly non-scientific. All we know is that we're willing to give up some comforts to sail a bit faster. This is the point of the video where I'm probably going to offend a few boat owners out there, and that's not my intention. And by the way, I'm not saying that any one of these boats is better than another but they're definitely designed with different purposes. On the one hand, you've got a Lagoon 42 in the lower right. Not a speedy boat, as even most owners will recognize, but they are very comfortable and really just a lot of boat for the money. On the other hand, in the upper left, we've got a gunboat. This one's Fado, it's a gunboat 66. It's a race boat, it's super duper fast, but not particularly designed for comfort. Our Leopard 46 is solidly in the middle. She sails pretty well. She's definitely not as fast as a gunboat, but still retains a lot of comfort and can carry a pretty decent cruising load. Now, if we struck it rich with cryptocurrency, this would be an easy problem to solve. You just buy a really big gunboat, probably hire a team to run it for you too. Then you can go fast and carry a lot of cruising gear too. In the real world, there are compromises to make, and Outremer does a pretty good job. They're much faster boats, but they do sacrifice quite a bit of comfort. There are lots of great designs out there, some slower and less comfortable than Clarity, and some a bit faster. I'd say the HH and the Balance catamarans probably have the best of all worlds. Pretty quick and fairly comfortable. The downside is they're very expensive. With all that being said, let's go ahead and throttle up and head out for a test sail. I'll cut to the chase. We really like the boat. With one exception. The helms, which we'll get into in detail, of course. While we're getting set up to sail, how about a quick little tour inside? Check out these deep cushions on this salon settee. They're really comfortable. Mm. Look at this bridge envy. Wow. That is so nice. And then close it there and do this. The white really brightens up the space and makes it look bigger. And it is a really big galley. Look at all that counter space. The finish work on this boat is really tight and high quality. And similar to Clarity, the indoor and outdoor spaces are very well connected. You would never know it, but this three cabin owner's version is actually a professionally converted by Katana four cabin charter boat. And these two twin beds convert into a king bed with a wedge insert. There are three heads on this boat, two on the port side and one in the master. Help my dad um, plot routes and start a course. I'd make sure the boat's on autopilot correctly. So this vessel, it's a ship. And you can tell if you're gonna intercept him or not. The longer we're at this, the more we appreciate a really nice forward-facing navigation station, and the Katana's got it. It'd be nice to have a little better visibility from inside, but for an open ocean boat, you can always step outside and get a look around. 
The entire starboard hull is for the owners. Aft is a king-size bed with tons of storage all around. It's compact and you'll notice there are no overhead hatches. But there are plenty of port lights to provide the ventilation. Almost goes without saying these days that this boat has all the cruising doodads. Water maker, full navigation and electronics package, solar, and like a lot of folks these days, no generator. They've got two kilowatts of solar split between two arrays, and that's feeding just over 1300 amp hours of lithium battery. I've always liked how the katanas are rigged. They've got one central electric winch for halyards and reefing lines, and that winch can be controlled from the starboard helm. Raising the main from the cockpit with an electric winch is definitely an upgrade from Clarity. There's a lot going on in the cockpit of a katana, no less than seven winches. And there's a couple ways of looking at this. On the one hand, you can say, well, what a mess. On the other side, you can say, well, you can adjust just about anything that you need to. And that's really the direction we're heading with our next boat. We want to have a lot more control over sail shape. And Katana's actually done quite a bit to try and help clean up the decks. All those lines are run through a tunnel underneath the bridge deck and up to the mast base. That keeps them from being underfoot. And like a lot of modern catamarans, they've foregone the main sheet traveler. Another thing I noticed right away on the Katana is that the gear is heavy. The running rigging is oversized and so is the hardware. All this stuff is Harkin. You can see the roller bearings. The sails on this boat are Dacron. That is a square top right there. And it looks like the jib is maybe a 110 or 115. Overall, she trimmed up quite nicely. Conditions were on the lighter side, about 11 or 12 knots. The side decks are nice and wide. This is a very workable boat. You'll also notice an absence of hatches. Nothing to trip over. Pretty nice. It had been blowing for a few days, so we were pinching up into a nice little chop. I would say it was two or three feet, and the boat handled it very nicely. The early katanas were designed by Locke Crowther. He was a pioneer in using asymmetrical hulls, and you'll find them on the katanas today. Fine entry bows that are actually a little bit bulbous below the waterline. Uh, the result is a nice slicing motion, not quite as much hobby horsing as we typically get on our Leopard 46. Pretty happy with your life? Yep, I'm really happy. <laughs> Especially when the waves are kind of small and you can just relax. Yeah. That's the best spot on the boat. On the bean bag with her bow. And you know what's nice about the trampoline being a little bit bouncy? What? Oh, you got a spring? It, it kind of springs, but it kind of like cushions it, and it's not just the hard deck. Yeah, nice. How fast are we going now? 8.2 and 8 10. 8.2 and 10. Now that's when the ratio is like, oh yeah, that's just, you better take a picture of that, because... <laughs> so yeah, what are we going? Uh, we're going like 6.5 and the, the wind is about 6.6. Overall, we were definitely impressed with the performance. But in terms of comparing to what we've got with Clarity, this is not a giant leap. She's just a little bit faster. One of the things we really wanted to experience firsthand were the outboard exposed helms. Megan has a history of skin cancer. Yeah, so I think it's all about the protection. You know, you can have one of these. 
You can have, if it's colder, you can have really good foul weather gear. So I do feel like you're, I'm just talking to the camera. <laughs> I feel like you're, uh, you're way more in it and on the water, that's a nice feeling. Our elevated bulkhead helm on Clarity is pretty darn near perfect. We're spoiled, but we've got an open mind. We definitely see the advantages of having outboard aft-mounted helms. It's very cozy. <laughs> Yes, this Especially is at this night. is this is our date. This, this is, is the date. love seat. This isn't the fight seat. The fight seats are separated by about 18 feet or so. Oh, that's if I'm they sitting did. over yeah. there and he's yeah. sitting it's, here. It's means his that and hers. <laughs> yeah. Besides having his and hers steering wheels, by moving the helms outboard, you also have a bigger cockpit for entertaining or lounging. But one of the biggest disadvantages is hard to escape. Right. I'll tell you one thing about this boat that drives me bananas, if you really want to know. And that is that the uh, visibility to the port bow stinks. So I have to stand up here, which is kind of dangerous. Now if I had throttle controls on this, the port helm, it'd be a piece of cake. Because I could run over there, do all my left corners, run back here, do all my starboard corners. Yeah. I like the first one. See everything? See everything on the sail. Oh. Right here, the helm where my dad or mom's driving is my favorite spot when it's wavy just because I get all the airflow. Oh, yeah. So. I tend to agree with the guys on this one. It's so nice to be able to see the sails easily from the helm positions. And a nice bit of airflow is what we're out here for. Overall, I'd say that this katana really does live up to its reputation. Great build quality, heavy duty equipment, and laid out for a sailor. There's a lot of tweaking to be done with a lot of lines and a lot of winches. Be interesting to put her through her paces in some stronger winds and really crawl up wind with those dagger boards down. And as we came back into the marina, I actually saw one of the main advantages of having the outboard aft mounted helms. As long as you've got edging controls on the side that you're docking to, well, you've got great visibility as you pull alongside and throw the lines. Gotta say, it was also really cool to watch this family work together on the boat. Big thanks to the Patton family for taking us out for a ride and really cool to get to know those guys. And well, we got a cool hat out of it too. Thanks, and a cool guys. shirt. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys. You're so generous to take us sailing and show us how your boat works. You can only learn so much by reading about a boat online or in forums and magazines. You gotta go out and sail them. One of our biggest concerns, I think, was the helm position. We had never actually sailed a boat without board helms like that. Yeah, and I gotta say, being close to the water, looking up at the sails, it was a different sailing feel. Yeah, you feel a little bit more connected, I think, to the water. Well, it's connected to your face at times if there's spray. It is a huge difference from being up at the helm on Clarity. Yeah, we've got that centralized position where we can control all the sails, and we've got pretty good visibility. It would take some getting used to, but like we said, I can appreciate being out in the salt air. Maybe not for hours on end, but... With autopilot, you can be inside and protected if you need to. Yeah, yeah your little remote control, you can steer the <laughs> boat from bed. <laughs> Overall, a very cool boat, and it's, it's nice to get uh, a variety of perspectives now that we're looking for our new ride. And uh, we'll take what we learned from the Katana 50 and take it to the next boat. A super huge, mega, ultimate thank you to our patrons. Guys, you're helping to keep the show on the road, or, or on the water, <laughs> as it is. You are making it happen for us, so Thanks thank so much. you. Thanks everybody for watching, we'll talk to you next time. Yep. Thanks for your comments. Bye. Bye.